right, all right. I want to show how to do this question right here. We're dealing with a frequency distribution on the left. We have a frequency distribution. And we don't have the actual data, believe it or not. So what we want to do is get this cumulative frequency distribution, but we don't have the data. If we had the data, it'd be pretty easy. But when I click this box here and open it in StackCrunch, it lists it as the summarized data here. We have a frequency distribution. So what I'm going to do is, now normally we would just go to, we would go to stat, tables, frequency, pick this number of colleges and then do cumulative frequency. That's if we had the actual data. I'd press compute, but now this doesn't quite work because what it's doing is counting the frequencies there's three zeros so it's putting a three there then there's one of every other number so three four five six seven eight that's not a frequency that's not a cumulative frequency distribution so what we want to do is manipulate these numbers to add as we go so the first number should be 20 and if I add 60 plus 20 that's 87 and what 99 and then I had 103 this is kind of what we want 103 103 103 and then 104 right so we want that but we don't want to work for it we want stat crunch to give it to us so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to data compute expression to our this is how we get to our calculator and then we go to build we pick cumulative sum where is it somewhere in here cumulative sum I double click that and then I'm gonna pick number of community colleges press ok press compute and look it did it for us those are the cumulative sums so cool so now we got those numbers so when we go back to stack to our homework on my math lab we can see those numbers right there if I move things out of the way a little bit see 20 87 99 103 and let me close this 20, 87, 99, 103s, and it ends at 104, right? Okay, that's how we do that. Now, what else could we do here? What about the cumulative relative frequencies? How would we do that? Um, let us see. Hmm, cumulative relative frequencies. We could actually find the sum and divide this these numbers. So we see that the, the total sum is 104. So if we divide all of these numbers by 104, that would be a relative frequency, cumulative relative frequency. So all we got to do is divide all these numbers by 104. So we come over here, open up StackCrunch again, and what we're going to do is data compute expression. That's our calculator, kind of like how you would do it in a TI-84. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take one of those rows for instance, cumulative sum row. Yeah, cumulative sum. So let's get that. So go to build, click cumulative sum, and then just, just do this. Divided by one, what was it? 104? Divided by 104, enter. Or not enter, hit OK actually. And then press compute. So we're doing, we're just going to take this whole column and divide by four, press compute. And look at that. This last number is a one, as it should be because 100% of the data is below this level. That's it, those are the cumulative sum relative. Oh, well, this is a little bit annoying because we have two round here, but let's see, what can we do here? Move around, what do they want you to round to three decimal places? Let's see if I can leave this here somehow. Move around, so yeah, you gotta plug all this in. 0.192 0 0.837 This is a little bit of time consuming 0 0.952 0 0.990 0 0.990 0 0.990 Oops uh, 0 0.990 Isn't there one at the end like something different? Oh yeah, one <laughs> Yeah, one. Okay, so check answer all right, what else do we got to do here in this question? Which of these is the frequency polygon? They want the frequency. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Which of these is the frequency polygon? All right, so we know it's, I mean, I can guess it. It's either B or C, but I want to show you how to do that.
Well, actually, I don't even need to guess that I know it's C. Because this one's like, just like in midair, just sitting there, it needs to go down to the bottom. The bottom one is 1 at the end, so it should go down to the ground. And so it can't, well, this one goes down to the bottom at 1. It could be this one, but these frequencies are too high to the left. So basically the answer is C. I do want to show you how to find that frequency polygon. How would you find it? Let's see, let's see. Well, for a frequency poly... Oh, which of these is the... Oh, guys. Hold on. For the frequency polygon, you're going to use the midpoints. So you just basically get the midpoints of these numbers and these frequencies. And you can get the frequency polygon. Use the midpoints of these numbers and these frequencies. Now... For the relative frequency ogive, you could do a similar thing. Just take your cumulative relative frequencies, which we found way here. Cumulative relative frequencies, take these numbers, but you're gonna want these upper values for the midpoints. Now I've shown I made a video showing how to make ogives and frequency polygons. I'm going to put that link in the description so so you'll know how to make a frequency polygon and a and an ogive. And for the cumulative ogive, just take these values here and just use these numbers and then take these values on the right. Cuz an ogive you need to take the upper class limits whereas in a frequency polygon <coughs> you can take the midpoints. So you would take the midpoints between 775 and 800, you would add those two numbers and divide by two to get the first midpoint. And don't don't forget to you'll have to add one in the beginning and the end because you need to go down to zero. So, so check out that link in my description. But I I, want, I definitely wanted to show you how to work with an actual frequency distribution if they give you that. All right, I hope that helps.